at the Czech Grand Prix alongside Agustin and Reed. Uh, and this is one of the number of top results at the High Level Racing. And of course, he went on to win three TT races, including in 1970, the Poddy race with Slippery Sam. But of course, he's most famous for beating uh, the legendary Mike Howard in 1979. He stopped racing professionally in 82, uh, sorry, 92, uh, but still uh, gets out and raids regularly with the CRC. So, a big round of applause, please, for Alex George. Come on, Alex, get up here, mate. Turn it on, mate. There's a switch. Hold it. Yeah, technology doesn't work with Alex. Try like that, mate. Hello. Okay. Yeah. We, we have got somebody doing. We have got somebody doing sound. Yeah. Have you been out on track? Yes, I have. What have yes. you been out on, mate? Um, one of Ron Chapman's RS250 Hondas, and the thing's a bloody jet. Far too fast for me, I'll tell you. <laughs> because you've been racing regularly this year, or last couple of years. Uh, with the Railsfords uh, on the big Triumph, is that right? Yeah, Triumph and Ducati, Silly uh, Triumph as well. We would one or we do ride. We have got some in the sound, but he's struggling a bit. Go on, keep going. Uh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, uh, we, another one we rode there was the Silly Triumph, which is the Boyle Triumph. Uh, and there's only nine of them ever been made. And the one I'm writing now is number nine, and it's a joy to write. Uh, I wrote it around here, and it was like a one, two, five. Honest to God, it was. Bloody great triumph, and uh, a lot of fun, a lot of speed. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, I hope you went out there racing. Anyway, I've got some questions for you, Alex. Uh, so, of all your races, wins, and amazing results, I know it's going to be really hard because you're going to your brains here. Can you pick out one of them that um, sticks out in your mind? Well, the 79. TT, uh, the race we had with Mike Hillwood, um, you know, I wish I could relive it now and explain it all to you, because uh, at the end of the race, which was 226 miles, I think you've got to hold the mic a bit closer, yeah, mate. Uh, 226 miles, 227 miles, uh, we got off the bike and Mike was there and I said to him, oh, I, I thought he'd won it, I thought he'd won it, and uh, why are the bike there? <laughs> you know, and uh, Mike says to me, oh, he said, I don't know, I don't know. So just as we're walking up together to the podium, I'm holding on to him and he's holding on to me. Charlie Wilkins is bringing up the rear and uh, Jeff Cannon, uh, sorry, Peter Neal, Peter Neal from Mike's radio said, and we have the result. I mean, oh yeah, great. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm second, you know. I, I've given everything, I can't go any faster. We've been bouncing off of pankins, bouncing off of walls, killing chickens and parrots and ferrets and God knows what else. And he says, it's Alex by 3.4 seconds. And 3.4 seconds after a fair wind of racing is something special. And that was the first one of the really close ones, first of the really close results. So if you imagine that, six laps round the other man, round the TT course, as fast as the thing you are ready will take you, no quarter given, no quarter asked, against arguably the fittest man who's ever been around in racing, and they come off and they tell you you've won it by 3.4 seconds. That is just mind blowing. I still think it, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was really, really special. It's still special now. Uh, and the problem with it was, uh, I beat Mike, and everybody absolutely hated me for doing it. They did <laughs> Yeah, you're the guy that beat Mike Kilwood. Not, not, not sort of well done or anything like that. But over the years, sort of, things have settled down, and all of the guys have said, oh, you beat Mike Kilwood, you're this and you're that, you're the next thing. They've all come around and said, bloody great race. I was there at Quarterbridge, I was there at Hillbury, I was there at whatever, you know, Bradenbridge, Palaf, 
I mean, Balaf, I'm sure I went through the same height at Balaf, or the pub window. There's some guys hanging at the window there. I'm sure I could see his teeth. You know, that's, <laughs> so it's quick. And uh, we finished the race, and, and that was it, you know. And uh, it's just a moment, in, not just a moment of the end of the race, it's a moment in history, you know, Honda versus Suzuki. Uh, goodbye versus bad guys. I want to jump in there, Alex. Go on. Did, did you know going into that race that it was going to end up as tight as it did? Did you think you could win it? That's what I was going to say. Well, uh, I've always been the, of the opinion that never start a race and say you can't win it, otherwise you beat me before you start. As soon as the flag drops and you said to yourself, I can't win this, you beat me. That's it. I went into the start and I said, hey, we're going for this. Uh, we'll go as fast as we can without killing ourselves or anybody else for that matter. Um, and the, the motorway that you see nowadays, uh, which is the TT course, is not the like the road it was back then. Believe me, you know, you come down, your, your eyes are rattling in your head and the soul be straight. You can only, Joey once said it, he says, uh, how do you go on, Joey? And Joey says, well, <laughs> there's a green bit and a gray bit, which is the road, obviously. He said, I, I generally try and ra race down the, the grave bit, you know, which is the road. And that's what it, like, it is, it really is like that. Because you're doing, I don't know, what do you reckon, Ian? 160, 170, then so be. Something like that, isn't it? And you, you say to yourself, I can't see, because your head's dragging like that. Really, really dragging. You're on the, the tips of your toes going through the jumps in the middle of it. And anybody who says that they're going down there, absolutely flat, flat, flat out. It's plain and simply lying to you. Because uh, I, mean, I also had the prize. I said to him, the first guy come in, the first guy to do 200 miles an hour down the Soviet Strait, I'll be the first bloke there to shake his hand because it, it couldn't be done with the road conditions as it was because like that. Uh, and now, of course, it's like a bloody, it's like a billiard table. But yeah, um, so getting to the end of the race, we we done very short of things afterwards and talked very little about it, you know. Uh, and of course, shortly after that, he was taken from us. And uh, uh, heavy heart, heavy heart with that one. But yeah, that's it. Um, other races include uh, Suzuka in Japan. Uh, we were winning the race and we lost third gear at the Honda. Is this, is this the world champion? Uh, world championship? Yeah, 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 endurance world championship. We were leading the race and Ronnie was on it and he lost third gear. Now, as Ian will tell you, third gear round. Suzuka is the gear to have. It's all swiftly and swift. Anyway, they brought it back in, and uh, Ike Hassan said, the boss at Honda, he said, oh, finish, Alex, finish, finish, finish. I went, no, 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 no. And we checked the gears on the stand. So whatever had broken had fell to the bottom of the sump. I said, we'll be okay, we'll be okay, we'll be okay. And I said to Ronnie, I said, you okay? He said, yeah. So we cleared it up, changed the oil, went back out, and we finished, I think it was either second or third. Uh, and that was a big achievement as well. And of course, in Honda's backyard, because they owned the place, uh, that went down very well. We were heroes, <laughs> fireworks going off and all sorts of stuff. Brilliant, brilliant. So ne next question, Alex. Of all the machinery that you've written, and that's a very, very long list, can you pick one that is, was special to you and why? Oh, where did you start? Made you think? Yeah, we, we went through all the, all the series. We had, first of all, we had air-cooled Yamahas, then we had water-cooled Yamahas, and then we had like over, well, there were strokes Yamahas, where we did 351cc as opposed to 347, and that put you into the 500 class, and that then slowly but surely put paid to all the Suzuki's, the TR500s and that sort of thing. And then lo and behold, Suzuki would come out with a square four that nobody could even start up, never mind right. Because I mean, look, imagine it, you've got a twin cylinder bike, and then the next bike comes through the front door, there's a four cylinder RG500 with disc valves, and squish heads, and oh, all six speed gearbox. How are you supposed, you look at the manual, and the manual says, please begin here. And it, <laughs> it doesn't explain to you about uh, clearances and, and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, as the season progressed in, uh, as time went on, the, the four strokes started to come in, um, and then obviously the, the Formula One, Formula 750, uh, and all the rest is four strokes from now. The thing that Eves runs a massive thing that's really, really fast. And the four strokes took over basically because they were easier to maintain 
and, uh, uh, and just basically took over with it. Then they started doing things with a bit of noise, and oh, that just killed it dead. So I've seen lots of different things from Manx Nortons and 7Rs and G50s and Verisets and that sort of thing, right the way through the Yamaha era, Suzuki era, then the Grand Prix, the, the available Grand Prix machines, um, which weren't very many, there was only like 20 or 30 each year. And we were lucky enough to be awarded one from uh, the Dutch importer in Holland. And we, we took that to Grand Prix and did very well with it, you know. And uh, one bike I did ride, which really cheered me up, was uh, the Fath 4 helmet, Fath 4 cylinder one. Um, a little quick story. Uh, Billy Nelson was due to ride it, and uh, he wanted to ride his Yamaha, his 354 Yamaha. So Helmut says, oh, Alex, you must ride. So apologies for any Germans here, by the way. It's not intentional. It's just a bit of fun. You were like, you ride right, right, my motorcycle, Alex. I said, oh, yeah, 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 because I had done a primary gear in the Suzuki. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's looking for someone to ride it. He hears about me looking for parts for my Suzuki. And he says, oh, you try my bicycle. Now the frame is made out of gas tubing, based roughly on a 350, and obviously a Posen 4 cylinder two stroke engine. And my God, this thing was fast for the time. Um, is it, this is 500 cc? 500 flat four. And uh, we, it, it let me read it and I went, God, oh, do you look at the state of this? It wasn't very professionally done, but the engine was like, oh, what? A rocket ship, this thing. I passed. Uh, Reedy down the start and finish, I was like, swear to God, I passed Reedy down the start and finish straight with this thing. He thought, he thought he was laughing at me and I passed him back again, you know. So, very, very fast. And uh, we didn't finish the race because the spark plugs stick straight out the side of the cylinder heads. Like a kind of lawnmower kind of an engine, you know. And uh, the old, Frank, uh, the old uh, Bruno circuit, or Bruno circuit, it's actually around the towns. And you crank it left, crank it right, you're all cranking it every, everywhere, you know. And we were really getting into it because this thing was quick. And I go, oh, scrape, 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 scrape. Anyway, what happened was we ground the two offside plug leads off the plugs. <laughs> we ground them away, and it's because it went on two cylinders. And we come back into the paddock, and Helmut says, oh, God for damned, and what's wrong with it, and so on and so forth. And I show them the plugs. He says, oh, it was so schnell, so schnell. And I'm going, yeah, I know, I was me, it was all. <laughs> He's getting really, you know, really enthusiastic. What a man, what a man. And that was, that was a bit special because it was one bloke in his bike. One bloke on his bike that he built, he tested in the forest in Germany. And this was the result of the engine. And oh, that was quick. That was quick. Well, you talk about what a man, what a man. I'm just going to rewind a little bit there. You mentioned... Um, Phil Reed there and uh, everybody in this room will know that we lost Phil Reed this year uh, a very different character uh, to say the least in fact I, I was interviewing him uh, at a CRMC meeting at Donington yeah. two or three years ago and uh, I don't think you could have got any more F and W words in one sentence <laughs> uh, it was quite embarrassing but yeah so well, what are your memories of Phil I know that he meant a lot to you well, the first word is quick. He was quick, even in the end of his end of his life uh, on the classic bikes and so on. So on. anywhere, Mallory, Donington, is quick, always quick. And we done some events in Italy and on various other places as well. Again, same thing, always quick. But if you got in the wrong side room, oh man, oh man, <laughs> he's a mouth on him, I'll tell you. And uh, we were in Finland at the, the Finnish Grand Prix at Matra, which is basically a square, it's a bit more involved in a square, but it's a square run down, you run down the river, cross over the railway lanes, and I've already seen photographs of Sheedy crossing the railway lanes and, and Kenny Rocks and everybody else, this is for real, this is for, you're like three, four, five foot in the air over this crossing, and then back round to the village, down through the main street, and back round through the forest again, and back down past the start finish. And uh, we're at the prize game afterwards, and uh, he, he'd drunk uh, a fair few gallons by now, and so had Madeline and his wife, you know, love them both, love them both. So Madeline starts up, she says, oh, 
Oh, you bloody privateers cost Phillies championship. Well, that's an old thing to say to me, really, isn't it? You know, we're sitting at this big, long uh, uh, table thing, for want of a description. We were on one side, and Reedy was on the other side, and Igor was there, and so on and so forth. And uh, I said to her, I said, Madeline, it's better, she say, just sit down and be quiet, sweetheart, you know, because I can't hear her. Ah, oh, don't you, buddy. And then Reedy started up. He said, another few gallons on top of the gallons he's had. Don't you talk to my wife like that. I said, oh, God, Christ, oh, wait, it's going to be warfare here. Anyway, um, Billy Nose was to my right. Jack Finney was to my left. And it's going on and on. It's really getting elevated now. It's screaming at each other. So I said, Phil, sit down. Ask Wagner to sit down. Let's have a. Because all the, all the town people are there the Lord Mayor and the bloody Chief of Police, the Chief of the Russian Army, for all I know, because the Soviet Union is just across the road. I'm, I'm serious. We went up in a plane and he's flying around this plane. He says, The guy says, Gentlemen, welcome to Russia. I went, You're joking, Russia? I said, Yeah, get us out of here. So we got back in. So come to the end of the story. I said, Phil, stay down, mate. You know, you're making a fool of yourself. I'm sorry you lost the championship. He won the race, but lost the championship. Um, I was flat off fourth or fifth or something like that. And uh, yes, she's gone. I saw you bloody privateer. I said, Madeline, my love, my darling, my sweetheart, you were a privateer not too many years ago with Phil on Manx Nortons and things like that. That made it worse, poof. <laughs> so Phil gets up and he lunges at me. I reached across this big oak table, grabbed him by the collar, pulled him across the table, and we're gonna we're gonna get physical. I just may I never move from here. That's a true story. And Jack finally grabbed one arm, and uh, Billy Nelson grabbed the other arm, and they said, "Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down," and they pulled me back on the chair. Now. From that day to the day he died, that man showed me the absolute total respect, and I did to him. And that's how you had to be with Phil. You had to front him up and say, whoa, that's, that's out of order, mate. That's out of order. And he always came and welcomed me, and I always welcomed him, and we always got on well together. So it took that human interaction of me going to smash his face in <laughs> to, to gain that respect. Once you had the respect, he'd do anything for you. I know he's helped injured people get back home, uh, helped loads of people in various countries that he's been in. Don't get me wrong, he's taken a lot of money out of those countries as well. I you know, he, he don't drive a Rolls Royce on £10 a gallon, you know. <laughs> and uh, I just love the guy. Of, of all the memories I have of him and his, his goings on, shall we say, yeah, I just love the guy. I got nothing but respect for him. He is one of the greatest British writers. Not the one, not in my choice, but one of the greatest British Raiders so far that has come along. And God bless the man. Yeah, Alex, that's Applause, great. please. Come on, you can too slow. Okay, before, before I move on, uh, can everybody hear us okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you sure? Those at the back, can they hear okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's just that up here, because I've got these speakers pointed at me, it sounds really weird, but as long as you can hear, that's great. Okay, right, we're gonna move on to our next guest. Let me change let me change my paper. Are you ready? Uh, not really, okay. <laughs> Just change glasses as well. Hang on. This is the age. Okay, right. This to... chap, uh, who I'm sure many of you have already met today, he started uh, racing when he was just 16 years old in 1986. Just two years later, he was racing in the British Championship Supercup, which is Supercup, which is now known as VSB. In '91 and '94, he won the 600 Supercup Supercup Super Cup Championships. Get to that, Sam Spitter. Yeah, I'm still getting there. In '93, he won the 400 CC National Championship. In '97, he was the Production Power Bike Championship. He's won the Northwest. Northwest 200 races, no less than five times. He's been on the top step of the podium at the TT three to, three times. A big round of applause and welcome, please, for Ian Simpson. Okay, 
Just a little bit of a... Uh, Ian, going on there. Okay, right. Ian, thank you. And you've been out today on your bike. had a quick chat with you this morning before you went to start playing. Um, right, so tell us about the bike that you've been out on today before we go anywhere else. Oh, it's my pal Colin Morris. He's RC45. It's a bike I used to race in 98. So, ah, it's a lovely thing. It's just exactly as it was. And that is the bike that you've won the TT on? Um, it wasn't. I, I won the North West and also Grand Prix on it that year, but I had a factory bike for the TT, an ex John Kaczynski bike. Um,